weekend I got together with a girlfriend and I planned out this whole annual planning session and it was so fun. Hey guys and welcome back. Uh, it is the end of December. How did this happen already? Today is not going to be an email marketing video. Um, if you have been on my channel before, maybe you've seen some of my Klaviyo videos. My name is Monica. I am a Klaviyo email marketing specialist, and I am also an e-commerce entrepreneur. So I have my own online store. We sell these little vitamins here. And today I want to talk about 2022 planning, my goals for this year, where I'm at, and then my goals for next year. I feel like telling goals publicly holds you super accountable as well as last weekend I got together with a girlfriend and I planned out this whole annual planning session and it was so fun so I want to share that. Okay so last year I broke my goals down into two categories one was personal and one was business. When I talk about business goals I'm talking about goals for my e-commerce business that's Maria. When I talk about personal goals, it includes my consulting business, so everything email marketing, as well as just general personal goals. So let's review what my goals were last year and how I did on achieving these goals. I have my computer because these are written down in front of me, so I'm just gonna talk you through them. So one of my goals last year was to make $35,000 in personal income, and I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but I quit my full-time job at the beginning of this year to go full-time on Maria, and I wanted to just make sure that I was making enough money that I wasn't depleting my savings, that I could keep things kind of rolling, and I'm super pumped that I was able to make, I think, closer to 50 grand between renting our apartment and our house on Airbnb, so right now I'm in our apartment, we built this um, this was completed in 2020 and we've utilized this to generate some income. So we became super hosts on Airbnb this year. I'll list our listings below if you're ever interested in coming to Jackson and want to check it out. But we were able to generate somewhere around like 30 to 40k on our Airbnb, which is amazing. So that kind of covered that anyway. Um, I also rented my car on Turo and I made around four grand doing that this summer. Um, and I made about 25 grand in my consulting business and email marketing. So those all combined, I did much more than I thought I would for personal income for this year, which is amazing. Another personal goal was to get to 3,000 subscribers on YouTube. Was not consistent on YouTube and so I did not reach that goal, but that's going to roll over to next year because I do really love creating these videos. Another goal was to build an online course, which I did a Black Friday Cyber Monday live course, and I got 11 people in it this year, and I, like that just blew me away. So I'm super pumped about that, made that happen, made about 5K on that course, amazing. I wanted to spend two months away from home and we spent more than two months away, away from home. We were in Barbados in January. We kind of did, we rented our house and went to Barbados and rented a house there. That was amazing. Um, and in September, we spent about two weeks back in Maine for a couple of weddings. Uh, we went to DC for a wedding and then we spent like two and a half weeks um, sailing and in Portugal um, helping friends move a boat. So made that happen as well. Something else on my list was two different surf trips. So our January trip to Barbados was a surf trip and I went to Nicaragua for 10 days with friends in November for surfing. So check that off. Um, I'd say that the play column this year was super bountiful. Last but not least on my personal goal list was to run a 50K. It would have been my second 50K. I really love trail running, really love running long distances. More than anything, I just like the training process. Um, and it's not really about like how my body looks or feels. It's more just about getting in really good endurance shape because we live in the mountains and I love playing in the mountains. Um, so trained really hard and on my last train run for the Route 50K this year, 
I unfortunately tore my calf about three weeks out from the race, and so I wasn't able to race, but I had an amazing summer running in the mountains, um, so I honestly can't really complain there, and I'm not that upset about that one. Okay, moving on to business goals. So this past year, I wanted to do 120K in revenue for Maria. Unfortunately, we did not hit that. We're closer to the 100K mark. And this really comes back to us being out of stock for about two to three months. We had an inventory issue. So had we not had that stock out issue, I can almost guarantee that we would have crushed that goal. So I'm still really proud. Um, it's a bummer that we had the inventory issue, but a learning experience and know going into next year that that's not gonna happen. Another one of my goals was to um, hit 10K on Instagram. We didn't hit 10K, we're around 7K, but I'm super pumped about this as well. We went from 2K to 7K in like literally two weeks because of a viral Instagram reel. So super pumped that we were able to do that. And we are posting reels regularly now, so I'm excited to see how that can keep us growing and if we'll occasionally keep getting viral content there. So really excited about that. Another thing that we wanted to do was hit 10K on TikTok. We are at 4K, but we're being really consistent on that channel and we're continuing to get a lot of really good views. So again, not upset. Maybe a follower goal on that channel isn't super viable. Um, so those were, I think, most of my goals for 2020. 21. Um, feeling pretty strong about where we stand with all of them and I'm excited to kind of move into 2022 with some learnings. So before I dive into what my actual goals are this year, I just want to share the uh, 2022 planning system that me and a friend ran through and um, share that with all of you. It's a dashboard in Notion. So if you're not familiar with Notion, we're going to dive in and I'm going to show it to you. And if you're interested in checking it out, feel free to duplicate it and use it for yourself. So how I put this together, I think is actually really interesting. One of the things that I, um, spend a lot of time doing, and especially my husband, he's in the real estate space and has his own business as well. We do a lot of reading and utilize a lot of thought patterns and thinking from people who know how to human a lot better than us. Um, so this planning is like four or five different concepts that I combined to make my own, things that really resonated with me and that I really loved. So one of the things that we did in this planning session was use, and yes, some of it is a little bit woo, but like, Gosh, I just love things that make me think and like feel a little bit more spiritual. So this archetypes deck, um, we pulled cards. Uh, so to start the session, we pulled one card, uh, journaled on that. And then at the end, we did a three card pull that I'll share a little bit more information on once we're inside the dashboard. Um, Another part of this planning is dreamlining, and dreamlining that is something that came from Tim Ferriss's book, The Four Hour Work Week. I love this book, and I feel like so many people scoff at it, but it's not really about working four hours a week, it's just about creating really good systems, and honestly, like so much of it is about outsourcing and realizing that your dreams are very possible. Um, so if you haven't read this, highly recommend it. And the dreamlining part of the, part of this process does come from this book. Another book that I just finished and just really, really loved was Darren Hardy's The Compound Effect. Um, this really talks about habits that are adding to your life or taking away from your life and was super pumped to kind of dig into some of that. And reading this book actually just makes you realize how important it is to do things daily that are making you better and over time it's making a huge impact 
it's not about the overnight success. It's about like the long-term gains from simple, small things. Um, so th there is some habit thinking that comes from this book that is in the planning guide. Other areas that it's not like super clear that it's a system, but um, thinking about overall goals and then breaking them into quarterly rocks. That is something that comes from traction. If you have not read this book and you own a business, highly, highly recommend. Um, I use these VTO, which is a vision traction planner every single quarter and remind myself of my quarterly rocks super often so that I can prioritize, does this task have direct impact on my goals. So highly recommend reading Traction if you haven't already, and I'll actually share this VTO PDF download below. So let's, I know that's a lot. How are we doing? Are we excited to dig in? Okay, uh, let's dive into Notion and I will take you guys through there. Okay, welcome to the planning section. So the first thing that we did was take our deck here and pulled one card. Also, if you want to purchase this deck, there is a link below. You can get it on Amazon. Um, so we did a single card pull and this is an archetypes deck. So we pulled one card. We put all the cards out, pulled one card. We read the um, card description and we followed this regimen. So this is a one card pull that gets you open and grounded. Um, you sit with the card, you stare at it for longer than you're comfortable with, you keep looking at it, and you just kind of feel that card in. What is it bringing up for you? Once you've read the description, you write about the card. So you can describe it, draw it, ask it questions. Does it remind you of something? Um, you can't get this wrong. You just keep writing. It's like a stream of consciousness journaling session. I feel like this practice just kind of got our minds moving and started to kind of warm up for the other parts of this planning session where we were going to do some deep reflection. To the 2022 planning template. So you'll see this drop down here um, is the instructions for how to use this document. So you can keep it neat and tidy or you can drop it down for the first time you're using it. Here's the optional card pulling information. You can get the deck here um, and any journaling prompts or journaling that you do with the cards can live right here in your cards for the year, which is also down here for, for you to revisit and remind yourself throughout the year. So the first kind of step within the planning is you're going to do journaling prompts one, two, and three. Those can all be found right here. Number one is a letter from your future self. I feel like this is always good. Some future self journaling. Um, what would your future self tell yourself today? How do you feel? What have you achieved? All of that goodness. Next, you're going to do a little reflection on 2021. I just told you all of my things that came true or didn't. Um, there were obviously some other tests and things like that that I wrote out in my reflections, but this is just a good way to get your brain moving and to reflect on the things that happened in this past year. Also, don't forget to celebrate. And then thirdly, your authentic code. This is such a fun exercise um, and one that I did through To Be Magnetic. Um, it's a little bit around manifestation, but also just a value determination exercise that can be really helpful when you are in a decision point and need to make a decision. You can kind of run your decisions through your authentic code. So this is an exercise to determine your authentic code. Um, once you have completed this, you can go ahead and actually place your authentic code right here in this dashboard so you can be reminded of it all year long, the things that are your core values and um, can help you make decisions. You can run your decisions through your values. So now that we have those journaling prompts under our belt, um, it'll be time to move on to just a general thought process of what exactly are you manifesting this year? What do you want to happen, personal life, work, 
Like, is there a house that you want? What do, what do you want to happen this year? Just start writing here and kind of put it all out. Can be bulleted or it can just be stream of consciousness. Once you've completed that, we're going to move on to some dreamlining. So this is a little bit more concrete. I would say a little bit more masculine. Um, and this, as we discussed earlier, came from the four hour work week. So you're going to create two timelines, six months, 12 months. In those six months, what do you want to be having? What do you want to be being? And what do you want to be doing? So having is more physical items, or if you're a business owner, maybe it's having an employee. Being is like, I want to be a good cook. I want to be a runner. Okay, so how can you convert being a good cook into an action? Well, maybe it's just making Christmas dinner for your family. And then doing, what do you want to do? Um, is it more travel? Is it date nights with your significant other, etc. cetera? Um, so we have an amazing little database here where you can plug all of those things in um, up to five or more per category. You don't have to fill all of this in. Just kind of put all the things that you want here. Um, once you have those all down, in this goal section, you also want to put today's date so you know what six months from now is. Um, write out three next steps you can take. You can just separate with commas here. And so say you're, um, you want to, this is one of mine. I want to have a coffee table. We have a um, like footstool and everything falls off of it. So I want to have a coffee table. So what is the next action that I can take? Well, I can measure what size coffee table we should get. And then I can start Pinteresting boards of coffee tables that I like. And then I can start looking for a store to buy one at. Then I can figure out how much it's going to cost. Then I can budget for a few months to save up for that. So that's kind of that thought process. And as you take action, you can move the things you've done into this progress column. Um, and then for me, I really like using these to determine like where my focus is. So like say the coffee table one, that's more of a personal goal, if you will. Um, say if it's date night, that is a family goal. If it is a having a six pack, that'd be a mind and body goal. So hopefully that makes sense for you there. Spend some time in here, write all those things down that you want. Then we're going to move on and pick our top, top five personal goals, top five business goals. Put those here to remind you all throughout the year what those things are. And once you have those written down, you're going to go into Q1. Based off of those goals, what actions can you take in the first quarter of the year to get closer to your personal and professional goals? This is going to be huge for prioritization for you for this quarter when you're working on something and you're not sure if it's what you could sh should be working on. You can look back at these quarter priorities that you've set to get closer to your annual goals and check in and make sure that they are actually aligning with what you want to achieve this year. Once you've figured out your actual goals, let's take a deeper look into some habits. Habits are going to be those little actions that you take that can get you closer to your goals. So you're going to identify good habits, bad habits, new habits you want to develop, and then a little bit around journaling on how you can be consistent, what can keep you um, accountable and maybe where you haven't been so consistent previously. This is a really fun exercise. And I've also included this master habit tracker that I use. It's just a Excel sheet, um, but it automatically tracks how many times you've done your habit that week and can give you a percentage of success, which I really, really like. Okay, so that's pretty much it. At the end of each quarter, you'll go back and reflect on how things went and then input your priorities for the next quarter to get closer to those end of the year goals. And um, I'll share now the card pulling that we did at the end of our session to just kind of wrap things up, see how we're feeling, get excited about our goals. Um, but I hope this was helpful and you can get the link to this template below. 
Okay, so to wrap up our planning, as I talked about, we did another card pulling and it was this Summoning the Divine, so you can see that, um, where you pull three cards. The bottom card is your root, the middle card is your heart, and then the top is your crown. This was really powerful for us. And I feel like these cards are gonna, I'm gonna keep them kind of around and, and read them often throughout the year to just remind me. Um, so summoning the divine is the shape and meaning of the spread is based on the model of the spine as a vertical path towards divinity. The old yogi and sages have been known to say we are only as awake as our spine. Although the spread is simplified to represent only three ascending chakra centers, you can of course include all seven. However, focusing on the root, heart, and crown will give you a grounded and clear vision of what is happening within these energetic centers of spiritual, emotional, and perhaps physical level. So to me, this was really like my energy and emotional state that I'm gonna bring into this year. So we pulled three cards and then one by one read them. And that this was just a really fun wrap up uh, kind of exercise in our day of planning that made us feel like we were going into the next year with like a really solid energy. I hope that you're gonna try this um, planning. It was really fun for me to do. And I'm going to go ahead and actually share with you some of my goals so that you can hold me accountable as well. Okay. My top goals for 2022 in terms of personal goals, I want to do 40 K and passive income from online courses. And so that's really like helping people with email marketing, but in a passive income way. I'd like to YouTube consecutively one time a week for three months. I think that if I can do one video a week for three months, it'll become like a routine and a habit and something that I'll just stick longer term. I want to do two girls weekends sometime this year. And so going away with girlfriends, it could be like a camping trip locally or a girl's trip away. Um, that's just something I want to like connect with friends a little bit more. So that's a goal. And then more alignment in my relationship with my husband. Um, so taking this planning and having us do it together for our relationship as well. I think that finding that alignment between the two of us is going to be super key um, and something that I just want to spend a little bit more time doing this year. And then while in 2021, I traveled a lot. I didn't take a vacation. There was no time that I took actually away from work other than the five days we were at sea um, on our sailing trip. So I want to take a one week vacation where there is no work, where like I am offline. So those are my personal goals. In terms of business goals, I want us to have 1,500 subscribers at Maria, so 1,500 product subscribers. Um, be doing profitable paid acquisition. We haven't really done much in terms of paid thus far, and it's an area that I'm feeling kind of uncomfortable with, so that is the goal is to get profitable paid acquisition going. That's like Facebook ads. If um, a strong manufacturing partner. We've had a couple of issues in the manufacturing area. And so I really want to nail that down and then have a bulk product on the market, something like this instead of this, um, and have a super strong product roadmap so that we can go into 2023 with some product development ideas and keep things moving. So those are the goals for 2022 help hold me accountable. And I can't wait to see what happens, I guess, at the end of the year, see where it turns out. Are we still here? Okay, awesome. Thanks for going through this planning session with me, guys. I loved yearly planning and checking in. When I sat down and did this in person with a friend, it was like a five hour thing. So feel free to take an afternoon and just really digest where your energy is, what you're feeling. Um, and I'm so excited. Leave me feedback if you do use this. I can't wait to hear what you think. And also, share with me your goals from this year. Let's hold each other accountable. Let's see if by making our goals public, 
and sharing them loud and proud if it can help us achieve more things. So if this video is helpful in any way, if you're downloading the planning doc, please make sure that you give this video a thumbs up to help support my channel as well as hit the subscribe button um, and come back for more entrepreneurship, email marketing, and all of those good things. Thanks for being here.